MBS Show. My name is Daniel Anthony. I'm the host for the MBS Show this week. Joining me today is Norbert Sanzo. Hi. So, Norbert, how's your day been? It was interesting. I went out, eat, slept, and did the show. Very interesting. And also joining us is the news pony. Hello. So, how about you? How was your day? Hmm. Let me see. I went out, ate, sleep, and didn't do much today. Well, Saturday's well spent, and joining us today as well, all the way from the Lunar Republic of China, is Draco. Uh, hi there, my audience. How are you? Quite well. I haven't expected I would be interviewed someday. That must be for Mother Celestia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you on. So, before we start moving into the show, Draco, we have four very important questions to ask you. Okay, I'm waiting. All right, your first question is, who is your favorite pony? Oh, there are many ponies I love. Uh, I simply love almost every pony because when I translated all the episodes, I just fall in love with every pony because every pony is just so sweet. I love Twilight, I love Dula, I love Derby, I love Lyra, I love Surprise. And if you want to, if I must find someone, some pony I love most, I think that's Dula because I think I'm more like Dula because I am a pony who stay behind the stage. Not quite the someone who's standing in the spotlight. And uh, you like surprise as well. So where did you first hear about surprise? Since uh, a lot of bronies don't know about surprise, really. Uh, first, I just wonder about Tumblr, and when I come come to meet surprise, I just feel she's just so cute and she's so funny, and I can't help but love her. And her color is so great. So I just. Did some fan arts for surprise, and later, after the season two is over, I come up uh, with a random idea that Pinkie Pie, the the changeling who cosplay Pinkie Pie, should be surprised. So, so I made a made a yes picture of it and posted it on Pony Brew, and then it become popular. So, I I found myself more in love with surprise. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, second question now is, which one is your favorite episode? Oh, I think I love Winter Wrap Up and Party of One most. I mean, season two is full of great episodes, but it's season one that turned me into a brownie, and the Winter Wrap Up song is just so beautiful. When I first watched this episode, the the video just crashed before I even finished listening the whole song. But but the song is just so beautiful, and it got me almost immediately. So so I just. Must trans do my best to translate every single sign in MLP, and as for party of one, I think it's just so breathtaking, and I just cannot stop watching it again and again. Wow. Okay. Party of one is a great episode. And so is the winter wrap up song. It's yeah. really awesome. Uh, don't make me sing it because it, we 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 won't we won't stop singing it if we keep going. Okay. Next question. Next question. Yeah. So our third question is. How did you become a fan of MLP? Yeah, I've I've used to be wandering around divine art for several years, and until one day, there are tons of MLP fan arts come from nowhere, and I just love their art style, and so I look a bit into this series, and yes, after watching some episodes, I just you know how it goes. I just become brown completely. Wow. So our last question is what. Do your family and friends think about you being a brony? My parents knows I translate ponies, and they have the problem with it. But and they sometimes even joke with me that I can make a little money from these episodes. But I, I said no because you know that's a non profit project. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, but other relatives just thinks this cartoon is childish. But I would just love and tolerate them. And some of some of my classmates and friends also know that I am a brony and watch this cartoon. But yeah, they just don't watch it though because maybe some of them don't like cartoons and some of them just like animes better. Okay, ah, I, I understand see. because it's a Western kind of cartoon because in Asia mostly people watch animes and whatnot. Quite yes, true. quite true. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here as well. A lot of people, more otaku's are around here. It's the cool Asian thing to do. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so let's head on over to our next topic. We have housekeeping this week. Norman, would you like to kick the first one off? Okay, cool. Thanks, Daniel. Anyway, um, in housekeeping, recently Michelle Krieber, the voice actor for Apple Bloom, had her birthday. And we sang her a birthday song. You can catch it on our site. So, Daniel, had fun during the song? Oh, yes. Plenty of fun. Yeah. Fun fact, we did it at, what, 2 a.m.? <laughs> 3am, something like that. Yeah. And you Why slept... can't Celestia raise the sun for us at the same time? She does. We don't notice it. <laughs> that means Equestria is flat and we are round. I, I don't know what to say about that. I think that. he said the earth is round. The chancellor putting it said that. <laughs> anyway, on the next housekeeping, Daniel, why don't you say something about this one? So, after I left JB after visiting Norman, yesterday he went shopping for pony swag in Singapore and he got himself the pony wedding set, the Cloudsdale set, and the Apple family set. And why are we telling you this? As a way to thank our fans, we are going to hold a contest on who can win this swag. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and keep your eyes peeled for more information. Alright, so that that's done. Now that our news pony is back, why don't you take the first news topic for the week? Okay guys, so for today's news topic, we can expect to see more pony stuff in the future. In a recent article made by License Magazine, Hasbro is expanding the license brand to reveal companies to, to produce products for them. The companies that were producing products for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic are stated in the show notes. So guys, it looks like we have tons of stuff. Like I'm looking at, what, shirts, jewelry, eyeglasses, stationery. I mean, seriously, what do you guys think of all this uh, pony merchandise? Official pony bling is coming. I don't mind, but the thing is, they're really trying to hit Asia hard because we got apparels from Asia and we got this one company who's doing buff products from China. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I think. I mean, it, I, I remember that back in the past when I saw the um, shampoo or, star, or toothbrush or something like that. In the random merch section of Equestria Daily, my first thought was like, wow, seriously? You have to remember that MLP is targeted for kids, and the way company make money is to sell swag, especially yeah, yeah. to children. That's true, that's yeah, true. And if they're coming to hit Asia hard, well, come at us, bro, we're ready for you. <laughs> Might be sounding a bit ridiculous, but they're certainly marketing it correctly. Yeah, you know, they're going to be rugged, so we can expect to see a real life flutter man. Oh, God, I did not yeah. thought about that. But get this, in Bengawan, which is most likely in, a, I'm not, Bandasri Bengawan is where? Brunei, correct? Mm, Bandasri Bengawan, yeah, I think. Yeah, so. yeah there's Bengawan yeah, Solo, a company there. They're targeting food. Mm. Oh, yeah. More confectionery, okay, more confectionery, like candies and stuff. So like what, uh, cotton candy, pinky pie, grapes, twilight sparkle? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see what they come up with. Draco, what do you think about this? You mean the products uh, the Hasbro has licensed? Yes. Yeah. In my opinion, I think that's quite good. Especially, there's one company from China, and and it's yeah products, uh, bath. Yes, the products from for bath, and yeah, I've seen in Taobao that there's a toothpaste, Pinky Pie toothpaste for children. <laughs> wait, wait, and, they're selling yeah. toothpaste on Taobao now. Yeah, it's it's on Taobao. And, <laughs> Everything is on Taobao. I know, but the thing is, how do? Isn't that like you put in your mouth kind of product thing? Maybe I don't know much. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Taobao just breaks any any surprise. So many prices, surprises that Hasbro installed for brownies. Uh, True, but well, not many people can go to Taobao. So for the ones that can, they're lucky. I yeah. think the more we think about it, the more weird it gets. So uh, I think we should just shouldn't overthink it and just accept it as it is. It's marketing. It's it works. Yeah, yeah. true marketing. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. can't wait to see what they have because, you know, I'm going to be that one guy in the aisle with Pinkie Pie toothpaste. And if you want to find out more about this and you want to follow this, you can find the link in the show notes. Right, so that's just a little bit of news for this week. Now, let's go on over to guest time. So, if you heard me earlier introduce the show in Chinese, now you'll know why, because our guest this week is from the beautiful Lunar Republic of China. Let's give a warm welcome to Draco. Hello, Draco. How are you? Yeah, I'm quite well. 
and I've been waiting for this day that Chinese brownies has stepped to the world. Awesome. All right. <laughs> So, um, Draco here, he's a person who does translations for MLP episodes and puts it out on YouTube so that, you know, like Norman has mentioned, his friends who are more Chinese literate can be able to enjoy MLP as well. And now that he's done all the episodes and is going on a big season break, he's moved on to other projects like Friendship is Witchcraft. And recently, he completed the translation of My Little Dashi. Yes. Uh, I have just I have finished translation my little dashi just two days ago and with the help of another brownie channel. Oh awesome. Okay. Wait, Draco Draco, uh, when you translate my little dashi did you cry? Yeah. <laughs> I must cry because without this this just soft emotions I just, I cannot translate the, the last part when the when the yeah, when when the how to say with Dashi and the main character? Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Spoilers. <laughs> oh, it's okay. just... <laughs> right. Oh, we can't we can say much about it. Anyway, it was enjoyable and you had a great time translating the My Little Dashi, right? Uh, yeah, it's a great time, but it's very difficult because the middle part is uh, a lot puzzling because I think uh, it's it's not as fun as the last part, so... Yeah, I have to work through it. Mm. So, uh, can you send us the link once we're done? Okay, I can send you a link later. Okay, no problem. So, now we have some questions for you. Norman, would you like to ask your set of questions first? Okay, cool. Okay. So, I've got a few questions for you. And number one is, what drawing applications do you use for your artwork? Oh, mostly I use I just use Photoshop, but sometimes I use Illustrator for vector artworks, just like when I translating the the game Minty Fresh Adventure, I use Illustrator to do the logo. Oh, I was wondering about that because it looks really good. Oh, thank you. So my next question is: Do you use a tablet for your artwork? Yes, I do use a tablet. I use Bamboo. <laughs> Cool. Ah, okay. We had a guest named Bamboo Pony and he uses a bamboo tablet. <laughs> and he got his name from the bamboo tablet. <laughs> I remember that. Really funny story about that one. Okay, cool. So how long does it take you to finish your artwork? It depends on the details of it. Usually it takes about four hours, but if the artwork contains a lot of vector and details, it takes a bit more. Like the the how to say the the Rainbow Dash one last time it takes about two days to accomplish it. Oh, you mean the Rainbow Warrior that one? Yes, the parody of a Taiwan movie. Because I saw that poster and it was wow, this was so good. Like oh my! And when you change it to Chinese font, like oh my god, this is even awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I have to say that poster was really good. In English, it was okay, but in Chinese, it was 20% cooler. Because this movie is a Chinese movie, so yes, a Taiwan movie, so yeah, it's it really suits Chinese more. Okay, what is your inspiration for your artwork? Sometimes the inspiration comes up just randomly, like Pinkie Pie puts out nowhere. Sometimes I have a little discussion with other brownies and they give me some hints. Of course, I use famous memes and jokes as uh, inspiration too. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So, my next set of questions are more to your subtitle projects. So, so how long does it take you to sub an episode? It depends. It usually takes about four hours to finish one episode. But if there's a song, it may take a bit more. I will revise subtitles later, and it will take about four hours of the reviewing. Oh, okay. Wow, four hours is really fast. Yeah, because I think I'm more skilled right now. Ah. Oh, okay, so my next question is, what kind of program do you use to create the subs? Uh, I often use HSR, but sometimes I use uh, vir- virtual dub as well. So you just type it in the program and it just shows on the show then? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. So were there any difficult moments when you were creating the sub for the show? There are many problems. Usually a song is the most puzzling part because if you want to try to translate the song that can sing in a local 
in Chinese, you have to pay attention to the rhyme and rhythm, like the pinky, like the smile one you seen earlier. And also, word play also gives me hard hands. I try to rewrite those word plays so that local local viewers can understand them. Yeah, I was wondering about that too because sometimes they use a lot of word play jokes. So you try to write around them. Yeah, I just write to I try to rewrite them just like in in episode eight, season two. There's a joke that ghost writer and the pinky shows. Oh, oh. Spike is a ghost. Yeah, that give me hard time and it spent me month to think of it. <laughs> and I have come up with something nice in Chinese that it can stand for something horrible as well as a writer. Oh, oh I see. So the ghostwriter thing, and okay, so that's going to be hard. Okay, okay. So, um, have you received any positive response from the Chinese speaking audience? Yes, most most my most of my audience gave me positive feedbacks. Grannies in Taiwan even adopted character names I translated instead of local ones by their by their local channel, and that makes me so proud. Some brownies tried to sing become popular. I translated a while ago, and yes, you just sing the smile sign translated too. <laughs> wow! So could you give us an example of which character you use the name and what Taiwan use? Uh, I translate flap shy xiao xiao die. That means a uh, little butterfly, and that presents her cutie mark. Ah, oh, okay. Huh. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Taiwan is uh, Pinkie Pie is Fen Hong Pai. No, that's that's Beach. If Fen Hong Pai has been uh, has been yeah sent to the moon because there are so <laughs> many local brownies pro- protect protested it. Oh, okay. See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you said about Chinese brownies, right? So, um, how big is the Chinese brownie community? Uh, I don't really know how many brownies in mainland China because not all brownies dare to speak out. Only a small amount of them come to me and say, "Hi, I'm a brown." So I can't say for sure, but each new episode usually receive around two thousand views. So maybe that can give me a hint of how many brownies are there. As for Taiwan brownies. Chinese sub episodes usually gets around now gets around six thousand views. Hmm. Okay. So you can tell, but there is an audience there. Okay. Cool. So, do you participate in meetups? No, because China is too large and the brownies are relatively few.、Ah. It's hard to gather to get together at one place and hold meetups. Most bro- most brownies just can't afford the money and the time. Cost. Okay.、Ah, so, do you have an online community where people can just instead of go to one place physically, they just go to one place virtually? Yes, we do have an online community. We have a local SMS group that there are about one hundred brownies there, gather there, chanting, joking, and yeah, do many do lots of stuff. Do you use Facebook to communicate with your fellow Chinese brownies? I have a Facebook, but only use it for to communicate with Taiwan brownies because most of mainland brownies don't have a Facebook. So, what website do you visit for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic news? Of course, Equestria Daily is the、uh, most used one. Sometimes I also go to Derby News too. Oh, so you just go to the normal news sites? Do you don't have any Chinese news sites? The Chinese news site is run by me. It's a blog. Oh, okay, I understand. It's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> no, so have you heard that Equestria Daily used to have adopted a Chinese name? No, I、oh, didn't know. Oh, no, China. Yeah, in the Chinese New Year, Equestria Daily just adopted a Chinese name, but the name is Ma Shu Zibao. That means、uh, Equestria Daily, and. But the but the official chan、uh, official translation of Equestria is Xiao Ma Guo, which means Pony Kingdom. Oh, oh Xiao Ma Guo. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I get it. That's interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Norman. So now, news. Do you have any questions for our friend here? Yeah, I do have a few questions. Building on from、uh, what Norman has、uh, mentioned, 
Uh, Draco, you've mentioned that um, in Season 2, Episode 8, uh, when Spike and Pinkie Pie uh, interact with each other, they have sort of like have a better translation, right? Yes. Yes. So are there actually any more uh, examples you can think of which actually translates better in the show? Yeah, there are many, and I think in Season 1, Episode 4, there's, there's Spike Juki Pinky that Green and Envy, and Pink and Envy, and yes, I translate it into the local wordplay too. Because, yes, in Chinese, we, we say, Si Chu means, yeah, Envy, and so, but Pink, but Chu is sour, and so I translate it sour into sweet, and that's more suit Pinkie Pie. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> I think this wordplay is actually um, sort of like, a key point of uh, the humor in the show and uh, it's good if it can actually become better or you can maintain that uh, that, that little bit of a uh, nice touch during the translations. That is awesome. So, um, my next question is, um, what do you know about uh, Tapao in relation to MLP toys? They just keep break Hasbro's surprises for brownies and yeah, the derby one is the most, most surprised for us. And yes, I got two derby po- toys from Taobao and that's amazing. You know right now I'm really jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, because I'm just lucky enough and I, yes, I ordered it at, at immediately when I saw it come up on Taobao. That's crazy, yeah. man. That's really crazy. I'm so jealous of you right now. I wish I could have my own derby. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to my next question, uh, building on from what Norman have asked, you said that China is too large for, for uh, any meetup to happen, so you don't really participate in them. But like in the US, uh, where it's also too large, they have meetups. So do you think that it's a possibility that one day uh, China would have the same kind of thing? I do have some day China will have the same kind of thing, but as as long as China don't import this amazing cartoon, I don't think there are much possibilities. Because because without importing this cartoon, the the viewers is limited and the, yes, the brownie number is limited too. Yeah, you have a very good point. So I think to conclude what you've been doing to translate this uh, show into Chinese, it's the first step to get things there. I did it just for fun, but later, because I got so many, yeah, uh, approvers and subscribes, so I just keep doing, and I have to force myself doing better and better. All right. That's very good. Yeah. Any more news? That's about it from my side. Uh, okay, why don't you move on to your questions, Daniel? All right, yep. So, um, Draco, I'm sure that you also look around not just China, the whole of Asia and the bronies around here. So what do you think about bronies in Asia in general? I think language is the largest obstacle to overcome, especially for China, Taiwan, Japan, and Korea. But as Top Zhou is in Philippines, that is part of the cartoon. Asia brony community does have some advantage. And especially there are some artists from Top Zhou that are on DA and Yes, also in the brownie community. Besides YouTube, since uh, YouTube is also not easily accessible in China, how else do you all get um, My Little Pony episodes? Are there episodes on Yoku as well? Yes, they are all on Yoku. And, and there are many other PMVs on Yoku as well. Uh, some brownies in China just downloaded this these PMVs and episodes from YouTube and uh, re-uploaded them to Yoku. Oh, okay. Do Are there any Chinese PMV makers? There is one PMV maker who is now doing a uh, yes a PMV, and he is from he is major in cartoon making. Mm. Oh. So maybe I think he will do something excellent. Excellent, but yes, he is still in process. Mm, okay, wow, we can't wait to see it. Since you do uh, subtitling, do you prefer watching My Little Pony with subtitles or dubs? I do subs, but I prefer dubs. But wops makes me feel like an alligator in my tub. I mean, yeah, dubs, <laughs> dubs are good. But if the, but if the, yeah, the voice actors and actresses didn't do their best, and 
yes, have, have didn't do well. The dubs may mess up. You know, there are epic failure of the dubs around the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my. Well, that one I got no idea how to say because sometimes it could be the director. It's kind of confusing to say because, like, Spitfire in Brazil is a guy. <laughs> yes, because dubs is... Uh, there are many factors that affect dubs. The translator may do something strange, like in Taiwan dub, they translated earth ponies into something like ponies from the earth, and that's just strange. It sounds much more epic, but it's true, it's strange. So uh, my next question is, since uh, My Little Pony is primarily in English, would you consider it a way for Chinese viewers to be able to learn English better? Because when I was younger, I used to watch Chinese videos with English subtitles, and that's how I brushed up on my Chinese. So do you think it will work the other way around? Yeah, I think it's a good way to practice listening. But you, you should also know that a good translation also includes localiz- localization. So they are not simply exact what the original say- sentence means, especially for the wordplay and slangs and other memes. Ah, I see. So wait, do you need to really love the show to translate it well? Because anybody can translate it, but to do a good job with it, like to know what's going on, to do the wordplay and all, you really need to love it? Yes, I really love the show. That's why I just keep myself, I push myself doing better and better. Because I just simply don't have to translate all the songs to make them can sing in Chinese, but I just love these songs and I myself want to sing this song, so I just keep translating them into yes, something more practical, more singable for Chinese. Mm. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think um, what Norman said, like, if anybody can translate the show, yeah, that's, that's true, but if you have a good grasp of the understanding of the language and humor on both sides, then you'll be even better at translating the show. And it really helps if you love the show, because it becomes fun and much more easy and more natural process, wouldn't you say? Yes, and translation is something that you should qualify with both languages, especially your mother tongue, so that you can translate a foreign language into something more natural and more practical, more yes. fluent in your own language. Because you can understand it doesn't mean you can say it out. That's yes. what most important. Yeah, translation business is a bit tricky, but it's still great if you manage to do it right. And I think yeah. it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's challenging. And, it's, and I also learned quite a lot translate, translating the whole series. I mean, I learned quite a lot from the series and the comics. I learned something that, yes, I, I would never know if I'm not a brownie. All right, great. Okay, so uh, another question is, when you're in school or when you're at work now, are you an open brownie? I'm not afraid of being an open brownie. I even got a Twilight t-shirt myself. But I don't have many brownie friends in real life because, yeah, they are not quite famous in China. And most fans do prefer Japanese animes rather than yeah, American cartoons. So why do you choose the name Draco, as, uh, Draco Runan as your nickname? Yeah, because I love dragons at first, and Draco is a nat- Latin for of dragons, so yes, I use Draco. Oh, mm-hmm. alright. So my last question, this is just a little something that we had here in Malaysia, is when we tried to imagine what would happen if My Little Pony was based in Malaysia, what do you think would happen if Pinkie Pie was Chinese? Oh, I really don't know, because she's so random. Maybe, maybe you can think of some, some random movies in China, but yeah, but these random movies are, yeah, are more based on real life. And, and yeah, I said them humanized ponies because I love animals more than humans. That's why I love MLP. That's, yeah, one point. But I'm not much of a furry, technically. I just love animals. Ah, okay. Okay, so you're a big fan of Bugs Bunny and all the old Looney Tunes cartoons then? Yes. Mm-hmm. Understandable. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yep. 
So that wraps up today's guest time. So now let's move on and check our email inbox. So Norman, do we have anything this week? Well, we have some Twitter replies and whatnot, but nothing from the fans. Oh, all right. So you all know what to do. We have an email address. It's the MPS Show at gmail dot com. Feel free to send us anything. We do not bite. We do not scare people away unless it's spam. So now that we've got email out of the way, let's finish up with some shout outs. Norman, do you have any shout outs to make this week? Yeah, I do. I have some. My shout out is to Michelle Krieber. Happy birthday! I hope you enjoyed the video that we did for you. And well, have a great birthday! And Tasharina for singing her part and staying up way late. And you, Daniel, thanks a lot for singing and doing the songs. Yeah, no problem. So,、uh, News, do you have anyone you want to shout out to?、Mm, at the moment, I can't think of anything. I've been out of the loop of the community for quite a bit, actually. Ah,、oh, I see. So,、uh, Draco, is there anyone you want to shout out to? Anybody? Yes, I want to have a shout out to a Chinese pony, and she is quite famous, and she have her artworks in on Equestrian Daily, and her name is Santa Space. Yes, she she's now studying in US too, and yes, I hope she can do well in her study, and yeah, have more pony arts of Doctor Who's. Ah, okay. Yay. So finally, I have a shout out to make to all of you from the Malaysian bronies, all over who have bought stuff and used my Toys R Us card because I finally receive a voucher and I'm going to be getting my first pony toy very very soon. So yeah, I'll keep you posted on that. Yay! Congratulations. So if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us once again at the MBS Show at Gmail dot com. You can also tweet us. We have an account which is at the MBS Show. My handle is at Saint Pinky Norman. I'm at Norman Sanzo. Draco, do you have Twitter? No, I don't have Twitter, but but I sometimes go there and see Tara Strong do her <laughs> Twilight Leisure thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I wonder if you can translate that one. <laughs> so I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Norman Sanzo. I'm News Pony. I'm Draco Runa from China. And we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Like when you're stuck on a mountain, you try to go up, you try to go down, you turn around to face the wall so you can face yourself, realizing you made a mistake. Hey, you are being stuck on the moon like the rest of us, trying to make sense of it, crying 'cause we don't have any reason. We're alone together 'cause we all share the very same ground. Some will say that this is not gonna last long. Some will say that if we try, we can't go wrong. As time goes on, we are. Cause when we all come back, we lose our track of time and space.
Okay. okay That's it. interesting. And give me a second. I need to add news back. He accidentally pressed the red button. Yeah. Oh god, no. I, I am so stupid today. It's okay. We all are at this time. It's one minute to nine nine. I am really having a hard time doing this. I feel so silly right now. You know how to do it or not? I do. Are you sure? But how do I add to call? This no, is... look at your look at your screen. All right, right. Click your screen. Go. Oh, no, sorry. At the bottom right hand side, the normal. Make sure your normal view. You should see. Okay, okay, there, okay. Give a second. Give a second. Click on the call button. Ah, problem solved. <sighs> no, it's it's been a while since somebody dropped, and I have to. <laughs> Okay, hello. The trouble is, Sorry. iPhone cannot rejoin calls. That's the problem. Okay. No problem. 